What is that? Well, the tabernacle, the tent of meaning. But not just the tabernacle that has to be able to be torn down quickly because they're moving throughout the desert still, but special symbols that they're supposed to make inside that tabernacle. Okay, at this moment, Israel is wandering in the desert. We're still in that 40 year period. And so anything that these two men are supposed to craft has to be portable. They're to make the traveling tabernacle that will be taken wherever the people go. The tabernacle though, will have to be crafted in all of the important items inside of it, like the Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of the Covenant supposed to carry? The Ten Commandments. It doesn't get more important than that to these Jewish people. The Ark of the Covenant is the chest that you put the stones of the Ten Commandments in and take with you wherever you go. That's the Ark of the Covenant. But that's not all that these two men are supposed to craft. There's supposed to be a table as well, which will hold the golden plates and which also will hold the pitcher of water. The lampstand, likewise, and the seven other lamps depicting God's light. And the tabernacle itself will serve as a portable tent. You see, the tabernacle and all of its treasures was the gift that God was giving to all of the people of Israel. Now, yes, these two men had to be very gifted themselves in order to create all of these things. But the gift that they were making was meant as a blessing for all of the people of Israel. It wasn't a gift given like a set of skills that had been given to these two men who would craft such items. The tabernacle and the ark and the table and the lamp were to be blessings for the spiritual life of all of the people. One day there will be a temple built in Jerusalem and all of these items will be placed inside that temple. But at this stage in history, there's no temple. There's no, really, there's no Jerusalem. And so it must be portable and carried with the people. In the meantime, before the temple is ever built, the traveling tabernacle was the single greatest blessing God had ever given to the people. Top of the list, of course, the Ark of the Covenant which holds the two stones of the commandments. America was meant to be a gift to its people. Now, I cannot prove that biblically. There's not one word, Old or New Testament combined, not one word in here about America, not one. So I can't prove that biblically. But God's spiritual relationship with people and nations in the world didn't end when the book of Revelation was written, the last book in the Bible. God has had a relationship with people forever and forever. And I believe that America is a gift that God gave to its people, including ourselves. I can look backward at the founders of this nation and study their writings and examine the documents that were written by these inspired, courageous people and see clearly that they understood God's blessing in it all. The gift of America has been passed down to each successive generation. The gift began with a document known as the Declaration of Independence. If the colonies were ever to become a state, and if these collective states were to ever become a nation, the people of this country would first have to sever ties with the King of England, who had placed so many restrictions upon them. And so it begins. 
when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. And so the declaration begins. When I was a student back in Rockport, before the days of Jesus, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. We had to memorize the Declaration of Independence. And not just that. We had to stand in front of the class one by one and recite the Declaration of Independence. There were 56 founders who signed it. Before a constitution can be written, Ties with England would first have to be cut. The Declaration of Independence placed every signer in jeopardy and every colony in danger as well. But it's amazing how these laws of nature and of nature's God, how these concepts compelled the people to begin a nation. It was to be a blessing to the people, and indeed it was. David Barton, the historian behind the video series, The American Heritage, which Robert Weimer has placed in our church's library, says that there are four institutions which determine the shape and character of a country. Now, we might think after you hear these, well, I can think of one or two other things that would shape the character of a country, and indeed you would be right. But he says these are the four biggest institutions that determine the shape of a country. The judiciary, the education system, the direction of the media and entertainment, the pulpit and the church. Those are the four institutions. I stand before you today with the obvious. These four institutions, which determine the shape and character of America, have dramatically changed since 1776. And most of these changes have occurred within my lifetime. 